This video is going to be about identifying opposites and absolute values of rational numbers by using a number line. Let's first quickly review what a rational number is. A rational number is any number that can be written in fraction form. For example, 0.5 or 5 tenths is a rational number because it is equivalent to 1 half. And just to show you, I can write this decimal 0.5 as being equivalent to 5 tenths. I can use the place value to tell me the denominator. So this is 5 tenths. I could leave it like that. But like we said in the other videos, we always simplify our fractions using a common factor. A common factor here would be 5, so therefore 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. So 5 tenths can be simplified to 1 half. Therefore, 0.5 is a rational number. Just like you can find the opposites of integers, you can find the opposites of rational numbers as well. So two rational numbers are opposites if they are the same distance from 0, but on a different side of 0. So let's look at this example. 2 and 3 fourths and negative 2 and 3 fourths are opposites because they have the same absolute value, meaning they are the same distance from 0, but on either side of 0. How about you try? Why don't you press pause on this video, and why don't you plot 3 and 5 tenths on the number line and find that opposite, and then plot negative 7 and 1 half and find the opposite of that rational number. Okay, let's see how well you did. Did you plot positive 3.5 in between positive 3 and 4? 3.5 is the same as saying 3 and a half. So what's the opposite? Well, I know that the opposite is going to be the same distance from 0 in the opposite direction, so I know to put my plotting point on negative 3 and a half, which remember, if we're going more negative, the point would be in between negative 3 and negative 4, just like on the positive side when 3 and a half was in between positive 3 and positive 4. So I found the opposite of 3 and a half by finding the point at negative 3 and a half. And the opposite of negative 7 and a half, first I plotted negative 7 and 1 half, which is negative 7 and a half units away from 0. And I knew the opposite would be the positive of negative 7 and a half, which is positive 7 and a half. Now let's look at finding absolute value of rational numbers. We discussed a little bit about absolute value when talking about opposites because we used our distance away from zero to help us figure out the opposites. And just like we said, the absolute value of a number is merely the distance away from zero that the number is. So we would use the same strategies that we used when finding the absolute value of our integers. So let's answer this question. What is the absolute value of 4.5, or 4 and 1 half? Let's plot 4 and 1 half on the number line. And we can then say how far away this number is from 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half spaces away from 0. So therefore, the absolute value of four and a half is four and a half. We show our absolute value symbol as two vertical parallel lines. So the absolute value of four and a half is four and a half. 
I'm sure you started to realize that all the strategies you used in finding opposites and absolute value of rational numbers were the same exact strategies for finding the opposites and absolute value of rational numbers. So, how can you identify opposites and absolute values of rational numbers? Well, opposites are the same distance from zero on the number line, but on different sides. And the absolute value is just the number's distance from zero. To end our video, we're going to ask you a challenge question. Take a minute to look at the diagram and then read the paragraph to the right. A fisherman is standing 5.5 feet above sea level fishing. He catches a fish, probably looks at it and smiles and is very proud of himself, but then he throws it back in. The fish lands 2.5 feet below sea level. So from the moment the man was holding the fish until the fish then landed 2.5 feet below sea level, how far did the fish fall? And could you use absolute value to help you solve this problem? Why don't you press pause on this video and have a think for a little bit using the diagram. And think about how far did that fish drop from the man's hands into the water. Okay, so have you thought about the problem? Hmm. Well, let's figure this out together. If the gentleman, the fisherman, is five and a half feet above sea level, I could use my number line to show that he's about here. Okay, and when he throws the fish in, the fish falls and keeps going and lands at negative two and a half feet. I wonder why I just said negative two and a half feet. Well, two and a half feet below sea level indicates that the distance below sea level can be represented with a negative integer. So I can say that the fish is at negative two and a half feet using my number line. So the question is how far did this fish fall from five and a half feet down to two and a half feet below sea level? Well I know that the distance from where the fish was thrown to sea level would be 5.5 feet. And the distance from sea level to below sea level where it landed is another two and a half feet. And when I add five and a half feet plus two and a half feet, I get eight feet. How did I use absolute value to solve this problem? Well, the distance we said from where the fisherman is standing was five and a half feet to zero. And just by saying that five and a half feet to sea level, that's like saying what is the absolute value of five and a half? And then the distance from sea level, which is zero, to negative two and a half it's like saying, what's the absolute value of negative two and a half? What is the distance from zero? So the absolute value of five and a half is five and a half. Plus the absolute value of negative two and a half is two and a half. And we can add these distances together and get our eight feet. But since sea level is zero, we can use our knowledge of absolute value to find out the distance from something that's coming from above sea level and going below sea level. We don't have to worry about the negatives because the distance isn't going in negative. It's merely just going below the sea level. Well, hope this video was helpful. Remember to watch it as often as you like.